Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike, and this is my old 1990s Delta drill press. It's model 17900. It's a 16 and a half inch drill press, full stand to the floor. I've owned it for a few years, and today I'm just gonna do an overview for you. We'll check it out, and you'll see maybe this would be a good option for you, because I paid a couple hundred bucks for this a few years ago. This might be a great option for you rather than spending, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars on a brand new drill press. You can still get these. They're out there. I see them once in a while on Marketplace and Craigslist and I absolutely love this thing. Let's check it out. Let's start at the top. It's just got this plastic cover. If you see this thing wiggling a little bit, I apologize. The mount that it's attached to is not the best and I'll show you that and show you what you can not do to be me and have a wiggly drill press. So you have your drill diameters here on this chart and you have your materials up here and your different RPMs or speeds for setting up your belt system, which is super simple. It shows the charts for the different speeds, where to put the belts, these two belts here. To loosen this, you got a wing nut it's just plastic, but it seems to work okay. And you have a lever here. There's another wing nut on the other side. There's two shafts here for this motor. And you literally just turn this just a little bit and it moves the motor in and out and loosens your belt and you can change your speeds really quick. I don't often change the speed of this. It's set up for high speed drill. And actually, what is it set up for? 2180. So that would be smaller drill bits, hardwood, softwood. But like every single drill press out there, more or less, it has all the same design. You get your pulley system, you got a chart, you got a cover, they're all the same. Once these are loose, the motor travels on these shafts here. And this one, even though those shafts look rusty, is just butter smooth. No problem moving this in and out. Easy to get tension. Tension should be about one inch with light finger pressure. If you can move the belt about an inch, that's the tension you want. You're on the spindle lever, there's a stop, which is a common feature on most drill presses. So you have zero here and you turn this and even though that seems like a long distance, that's one inch, two inches. And then you have this little locking tab here and you can lock it down. There's two inches. And then when you pull the handle, it'll rotate all the way around and stop at zero. Here on the front, you get your power switch on. Down for off. It's got a little key in it, so if you have kids at home, you can lock it down. On this side, there's not a whole lot going on. You got behind the wire here, the wing nut for your belt tensioner for the shaft on this side. I'll show you in a sec. And then this is a tensioning spring. There's a coil spring inside here, and that tensions the return for the spindle. I've never had to mess with it, honestly. I have the manual for it, it shows me how to do it, but Mine's been fine ever since I got it. It pops right back, no complaints. So the way you measure a drill press and determine its size is the center of the chuck to the post in the back. And this is its throat. So this one is eight and a quarter, making this a 16 and a half inch drill press. If it was a 14 inch drill press, it would be half of that. So this would be seven right here. I have no idea why to give you the size of a drill press, you would multiply this number by two. It's never made any sense to me. If you know, leave us a comment because I've always kind of been curious and there really isn't a ton of information on that on Google, I looked. The chuck on here is marked RJ316L, which I couldn't find a ton of information on, but it would seem that a lot of different brands came with this chuck from this size drill press. There was mention of Craftsman and a few others. So I'm sure these drill presses come out of the same factory and share a lot of the same parts. So I haven't had any trouble with it. Nothing wrong with the keyed chuck. 
as long as you don't lose the key. The gentleman I bought this from included this tool tray, which I kept on here because it actually is pretty convenient. If you have a stand drill press that isn't next to a bench, it's nice to have a place to put your stuff. It's got a little indexing holes in it for drill bits, which I thought was pretty cool. I use it to not lose the chuck, which is something I would definitely do if I didn't have a place to put it. Standard on drill presses is a tooth strip here with gears inside here to raise and lower the table. So you got your lock right here with a nice metal knurled handle on it. And once you loosen that up, you can crank the table up and down. It takes a long time to crank it to the bottom, but it works perfect. And this is metal too. You gotta love old tools for the amount of metal used in things you touch because a lot of new tools, plastic. The only plastic on this really is the cover on top. You got the little arms for your spindle handle here. These are plastic, but the rest is metal. And then you got the wing nuts for tightening and loosening the belt adjust. But honestly, all this stuff, cast metal, solid. So up underneath the table, you've got this metal adjuster here. You loosen this. And you get your swivel for your table. All metal locks down. Solid. It's your nice cast iron table. And you have this which is the jankiest thing on here. So you have this pin with this threaded nut on the end of it and this large nut here. And this is the only thing on this that you actually need a tool besides the chuck to adjust. So to get this out, use a 10 millimeter socket and you have to tighten down that nut. It's really hard to get out of there. Yeah. So you got a pin on a threaded stud with a nut on it. And the nut is just used for pulling the pin out. To do your adjustment, I use a 24 on a breaker bar. This is literally, it's all I have that will fit in here. And you loosen that nut. So it might be a little hard for you to read there. You get your zero right here and a scale in degrees. And once you have your 24 millimeter Honestly, I think that's the wrong size, but it's the closest thing I have that works. And you can tilt your table to the degree you want. Then you have to go under and tighten that nut again. At zero, you would put the pin back in. I don't know why they just didn't put a handle. Instead of this nut under here, they could have just put a handle. They came down, you know, you could crank it loose, crank it tight, and adjust this however you wanted. That would make more sense to me, but... It's what we got. So with the pin in, but the 24 mil nut still loose or bolt still loose, even though the pin is meant to calibrate this at zero, you still get that much play in it with the pin in. So I don't really see the point of the pin. Better just line it up with zero and tighten the nut. So here's the mobile base that I use. It's a three quarter inch piece of plywood bolted to this mobile base. It's got flip up casters on the front corners and regular wheels in the back. There's only two places to screw down the base of the drill to whatever you're attaching it to, which is fine, I imagine, if it's the floor. But on this, it totally acts like a spring. And you get the movement in the base and movement in, I'm sure, that piece of wood that flexes because it's only three quarter inch plywood. It would have made way more sense to sandwich two pieces of plywood together to make them an inch and a half. It would have fit right in the base and it probably would be a lot more stable. So I've been meaning to do that forever. And if you see jiggling in this video, that's why this mobile base. But you know what? It works fine. You flip these levers around. Those levers right there. You flip these levers around in the front and the casters pop down and you can move it around the shop, which is really nice. 3 8 bit in softwood. <laughs> a 
hole saw and treated wood. Three-eighths through quarter-inch plate. So that's my old Delta drill press. It's got a three-quarter horsepower motor. If you don't force it, I've never seen the motors slow down unless I'm pulling it too hard. And when you let the tool do the work, it's totally fine. It has three inches and an eighth of spindle travel, which I think is standard for all of these big uh, drill presses. Maybe all of them, I don't know. Uh, it's convertible to 240. If you want to do that, I have it for 110. I think it's fine for me for that, even though there's literally a plug right here for it. This has been a great tool for me. I'm so happy I own it. And for a couple hundred bucks for this, you really can't do much better. I can't imagine it. The chuck, eh, it's an acceptable amount of run out for me for the basic carpentry that I do here and not trying to accomplish anything fine or crazy. I'm not a hobbyist woodworker. So for me, this works great. But I know you can get a Jacobs chuck for it. You can upgrade the chuck. They still sell these. You can get them on eBay. They're like 60 bucks. So there's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. If you like these old tools or you like tools in general, we're going to do tool reviews every week. Thank you so much for watching my video. Consider subscribing. See you in the next video.